Hello Game of Thrones freaks and geeks and welcome to a brand new episode of The Word from Westeros exclusively produced for allgeekedme.net. I'm Kate Calabro and this is my show. So season 7 of Game of Thrones seems to be all about the reunions and season 1 throwbacks. And while we're all super fucking amped for the meeting that we've all been waiting for that's going to happen in episode 3, I should really chat about the fall of Theon Greyjoy. Is it... Is it another fall of the Angry Joy? I don't even freaking know at this point. But before I break down the return of Reek, I mean, I think we're at that level now, but we can call him Reek again. Um, here is your water cooler recap of Season 7, Episode 2, Stormborn. Let's try to do this. I might look at my phone. A lot's happened. I mean, I can't remember it all. I'm not an actress. I don't memorize lines. So if I look down, I'm looking at my phone which tells me everything. All right, ready for your recap? Because <laughs> I, backstory, backstory to my life. Um, that's not what you're here for. So Danny gets a visit from the Red Lady, who really, really, really wants Danny and Jon Snow to meet because they're just destined to be together, apparently. I mean, it's not just what my dreams are made of, it's also what the Red Lady's dreams are made of. Um, we also learn in this sequence that we've been saying it wrong this whole entire time. The prince that was promised is actually translated to be genderless. So there you go. Bunch of fan theories were just like, Pfft. um, during a war room meeting, Danny and Tyrion let the rest of Team Danny know what's going on. The Greyjoys and Sans will go sailing off to get their remaining army to then attack King's Landing while the Unsullied will go and attack Castle Rock. Before he leaves for Castle Rock, Greyjoy and M Miss Miss uh, Miss Andy Miss Andy Miss Andy Miss Andy Miss Andy um, finally finally get together in an adult way. Um, this really that that gives it away. That tells me what happens. They have sex. Okay. Uh, what else happens? After much debate, Jon Snow decides to accept Tyrion's invitation to come and meet Daenerys Targaryen, um, which leads to him leaving the North in Sansa's hands, and also leads to him right before he's leaving, choking Littlefinger out in the Winterfell, um, cre cre crep? Creep? Whatever. He chokes out Littlefinger. I'm having a really hard time. Um, he chokes out Littlefinger and tells him to stay away from his sister, and it was great. One of my favorite moments. Finally, someone tells Arya that Jon has taken back uh, Winterfell and Sansa's up there, so she makes a decision to head north instead of south. On her way, she runs in with her dire wolf that we have not seen since season one, and though Arya asks her to join her back up on her trip to Winterfell, um, Nymeria decides, hey, I'm a lone wolf, sorry, and just walks away. And it was sad, but it was also like, we get you, girl. You do your own thing. Um, Cersei tries to rally the remaining Mandarin onto her side, while Jamie tries to work his magic on Lord Tar Tarly, who's Sam's dad that we met last season. Speaking of Sam, he decides to just disobey all orders at all time, and does an experimental surgery on Lord Friendzone to help him get rid of his grayscale. And then finally, to Theon, who literally jumps ship when, they're cra when his crazy uncle shows up and then captures his sister. Okay, so first off I want to say that I think last week I said that there was eight episodes and that Game of Thrones was going to only go till September, and then I found out in um, a very sad matter that there's only seven episodes this season, and that... Um, Game of Thrones is actually ending in August, which is even fucking sadder and made me super freaking depressed when I found that out. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. Um, as much as I would love to just talk about how excited I am that Jon fucking Snow and Daenerys fucking Targaryen are going to be meeting like face to face in person in episode three. I'm probably going to talk about that next week, so we don't need to talk about it now. Um, and I would love to talk about how we've had, we've only two episodes in and we've had already several 
season one like throwback references in season seven which is just I mean as cool as it is it also makes me really freaking depressed because it also reminds me that Game of Thrones is nearing the end and I, I just don't like to think about it I don't like to think about a world where I am not either waiting for Game of Thrones to come back on or I'm watching Game of Thrones I'm not ready to deal with that so instead we're gonna talk about how we should all feel about Theon Greyjoy and the decision that he made to jump off the ship once his crazy uncle shows up and captures uh, Yara Greyjoy who I mean I think I thought when crazy uncle told Cersei that he was gonna bring back a gift I thought it was he was gonna just go for the big guns and try to get Tyrion but I guess this is more of like an engagement gift in his eyes so he's bringing Cersei, Yara, and Mama Sand to be like hey here you go and I mean Cersei's gonna be real happy with getting those sand the sand snakes because they are literally the people that are responsible for killing her daughter so that's a that's gonna be a big win for crazy uncle and for um Cersei so this is my issue I have never liked Theon I think Theon is an awful person I have not liked him since episode one where he was just like a straight up dick to Jon Snow and I didn't like him when he tried to like counsel Rob and um, that didn't go well and then like he went back to the Iron Islands and then he groped his sister before he like knew that it was his sister and he did like all, all these awful things and then he had a really really awful thing happen to him because of Ramsay. And I get it, and I get that Theon might have some, like, PTSD issues happening. But, I mean, shouldn't everyone in Westeros have PTSD issues happening? I mean, Sansa Stark has had awful, awful things fucking done to her. But, like, when Jon was battling in Battle of the Bastards, she wasn't like, you know what, fuck you. I'm not gonna help you, you're just gonna die. She like got Littlefinger and she helped John out and like there's just like I don't I don't think I don't want to justify what Theon did. What Theon did was fucking awful and I don't know where Theon can go from here in terms of in redemption because so far it was like Theon does a really awful thing really awful thing he redeems himself. He does another really awful th thing and then he redeems himself. And he's kind of been on this level where like he has done so many awful things in the fucking past. Sorry, my phone just went off. <laughs> um, this has been a rough episode. Uh, so he's done so many awful things in the past and we've, he's been like kind of just like coasting for like all of season six. He was like coasting. He didn't do anything awful. He was supporting his sister. He didn't try to take the throne. He's supporting her. And now, and it's just like, and I know like the irony is not lost on anyone that like literally the scene before crazy uncle Greyjoy shows up, Yara saying like how Theon's going to protect her and he's going to be her protector. And then literally as she's being held with a freaking like battle axe to her throat by some, he's, their uncle's a psychopath. I fucking love him though. <laughs> I don't know why I just really enjoy him um, and Theon just literally jump ship and I just feel like at this point we have to stop making excuses for Theon and we have to stop thinking that like there is a redeemable quality to him and even if people's theories are that now um, Gendry who I know I'm fucking saying his name wrong I can never say it right Robert Baratheon's bastard is people are thinking that he's gonna pick him up and then they're gonna sail and this so this is my other thing with that theory is that has Gendry Grendry Grendry um been literally in the rowboat for that long like th that just can't that can't be possible that's a long fucking time um and it's not his fault. Like, if he picks up Theon, he doesn't know that Theon's a piece of shit. So, I don't know. I'm just... 
I, I think as a community, we should all just wash our hands of Theon. I, I don't, I literally don't know what he can do to redeem that, the lot, like that act. And I mean, and I feel like he's just, he is the cockroach of Westeros and I don't know forever if he, if he is the one person that makes it, that's just so fucked up. But I feel like that's the twisted life world that we live in. Ugh. Also, I think I should train Mark Cockroach of Westeros. It's fucking great. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of The Word from Westeros. Thank you so much for watching. And please make sure to subscribe to All Geek To Me TV on YouTube so you never miss another episode of this show again. You can head over to allgeektome.net right now, well after this video, but right now, um, to read my full recap of Season 7, Episode 2, and make sure to follow me on Twitter, at KayColabro, for up-to-the-minute Game of Thrones information, and see what else I do throughout my week, if that's what you're into. Um, Game of Thrones airs Sundays at 9pm on HBO, and until next time, remember, you either win or you die.